Ja'Cory and I put some together some of the key points and steps that you have to keep in mind when it comes down to building up out of this space and what we've been doing with artists so you can separate yourself from the pack and build beyond. All right. Number one, when we're talking about building community, collect information. Yep. Now, I know it sounds simple to some of y'all, but I literally saw somebody in the comments like a couple of weeks ago. Does it really um, become helpful to collect emails and phone numbers? Yes, it does. For real. 100%. And I know many of you guys have heard this information for a while. We're not going to harp on that point specifically, but literally collect emails, phone numbers, all that stuff straightforward. Now, how do you go about it? That's the more interesting point. And we'll get into that some of that as we talk about these other things. But part two is your mission and your brand values. We got to know what we're getting into. Mm -hmm. right? We got to know what we care about. Right? We talked about personality is one of those leading things or just that front facing aspect is not just the music. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, it's not the music at all. Hey, I fuck with them, but I can't even recite three songs. All right. That's the reality that Ja'Cory just, <laughs> you know, spoke for himself and got called out for it. But I think it's true for many of us, right? Because what's the difference between that and you saying, I like this actor or I like this just person and you actually do not know him? There isn't a difference, not to me. You, you watched a couple <laughs> movies or you heard a couple songs and you talk about you like them. But you don't know them for real, yeah. like the, who they are behind closed doors. It's the same thing. So we've all shown that we had the capacity to be that way. We just haven't been in an environment where it really affected artists like that. So, again, for me to feel deeper for you, want to be a part of your tribe, then I have to know what is your tribe. Mm -hmm. And you got to define that for your audience. You want to speak more on that? We're about to get into actually no yeah essentially it's, it's like the I don't know I look at it like well, who, who's the crowd of people you want to attend your party you know what mm. I'm saying it's the best way to look at it right yeah. like like to the point where you want the golf kids there you want you know what I'm saying I don't know who you want to show up to your party it's essentially yeah. how I, I look at the, the brand messaging um, and I know one of the big things that we talked about in that is also like how do you want your community to act within your mission and brand values, right? Like what are the rules and boundaries and regulations of being a part of your world? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and th there was a point I was talking to like a, a client about a couple of days ago that I, I think does kind of tie into this. She was asking brand questions and things. And so the way that I've come to understand it is like you as an artist, you are essentially building like your, your MCU, right? Your, your, your Marvel universe, right? And so if you look at Marvel, Marvel doesn't give you the whole plot in one movie. Mm. They give you the plot broken down across multiple movies, TV shows, spinoff, and things like that, right? But if you're a real Marvel fan, you're picking up on different points of the plot based on these little things that you that you watch, that you watch and that you see. And then if you bring it to, I guess, like real world, kind of like the branding of like Marvel and like them as a company, like they they do things in real life. They make the actors speak and, and talk in certain ways and in interviews that reflect whatever the brand is. That is essentially what you're trying to do as an artist. Like, what are all? What is my big brand mission? Right? How am I going to take this six hour plot and break it down into to ten movies? You know what I'm saying? That that my fans can consume in bite sized ways. It still gets the message across. And then how am I on the business side going to reflect that? You know what I'm saying? What re regulations rules am I going to make the people under me or, or a part of me? You know what I'm saying? Kind of re reflect so that my world is accurately represented everywhere that it goes and it's kind of talked about yeah i like that because the perfect example that i mentioned earlier was tyler the creators camp vlog now right yep drake came out drake left drake, <laughs> drake did leave. for those of y'all who don't know <laughs> do not know drake came out at camp vlog now that's tyler creators festival and he got booed now the reason he got booed is multiple folds, right? One, they came for Frank Ocean, yeah, and received Drake. Drake is not Frank Ocean. He's not Frank Ocean. Drake is Drake, <laughs> but he's not he's Frank not Ocean. Frank Ocean, All right? So when you talk about the marketing, the rules, and the energy that you're attracting people with, and then you 
do a little switcheroo. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't even give anybody in the same category. Now, Frank is a tough person to compare to, right? He really is in his own lane in many ways in terms of his perception and, and being that level of success with that type of style of music. But there's close, there's people closer to Frank Ocean than Drake, right? Yeah, I, I can see how they, I can see why they thought Drake though, but I agree with that. It's, yeah. it's much better people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if anytime Drake is that level where you almost think, hey, I, Drake. He, he right? crosses enough circles, right, you right. think, yeah. But <laughs> you advertise a twerk fest and you came Kirk Franklin. But Kirk Franklin. And that ain't right, right? That's the problem. Like, it's, why am I sitting down listening to this sermon? And I ain't dressed for this. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't come to see all these clothed people. <laughs> like, it, this is just not what we're here for. So, when you switch up that vibe, what you just marketed for, it's an issue. But mm -hmm. that's how powerful that is, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to the next level that that happened. Tyler, the creator, and his audience. Mm hmm. Tyler, the creator, the rules, the, the boundaries that he set were pretty open. And, and that type of energy was the energy that Tyler's always projected. Yep. Like if young Tyler would boo Drake in a moment like that. 100%. And he was like, yo, you know, you got to respect that. Da, 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 but that's not the brand that Tyler himself built mm -hmm. and the energy that he's attracted people with. Right. Yep. yep. And that's not even a shot at Tyler in that moment. Specifically, it's more so. A, a highlight of something he's done very well yeah. in curating that particular type of audience. Yep. Because there's some audiences, believe it or not, that wouldn't even just feel comfortable booing Drake. Like, they wouldn't feel comfortable booing, and then they definitely wouldn't feel comfortable um, booing Drake because they just feel like because of the clout he mm -hmm. has or whatever, whatever, all these mm -hmm. different reasons. Mm -hmm. Tyler's audience built a I don't give a fuck attitude who you are. Or whatever, yeah, whatever, exactly. Right? Well, if, you, if we got smoke for you, you're getting it. That is what it <laughs> is, right? So that's great because he built that specific community. What does your community look like? Now, when we number three, we can get even deeper into that because number three is give them space to hang out, yep. whether that's digitally or in a physical space. Now, a perfect example of this, I'm going to start at the top, the Dreamville Fest. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't go to the recent Dreamville Fest, but I was talking to Piff Marty recently. Shout out to Piff Marty. And he was there and he said it was really, really dope. You got some people told me it was 30,000. Some people said it was 50,000. Some people said it was like 70,000 people there. There's just a lot of people there. Yeah, either way. Right? Either way it goes. <laughs> and Piff said everybody there was like on the same type of time, same type of energy. Mm -hmm. He made it sound like it was like a good energy, positive energy, like it was J. Cole's values at scale. Yeah. Right. That community he built. When you can do something like that, attract one, your own fan base, and then also curate around that because it's your taste. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you're making those decisions, brand values and making sure everybody is in line with that and and your messaging and you bring everybody out for a specific energy. That's a big win. All right. And a lot of these concerts have issues when things overlap and you attract, you don't do a good job at cur curating on the front end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because even some artists that you might have on a bill, they can do multiple energies. But so if you can, you can throw them on your bill and they can attract that other side of their crowd that you don't necessarily want there. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do you do that? J. Cole is somebody who's been very, very, very good at like amplifying like his type of community, you already kind of know what it is. You, you're not, it's not there to be necessarily flashy, maybe cool and expressive and flash your creativity, but it's not the flash flexy way um, in terms of the stereotypes that we like to think. Mm -hmm. All right. I got more money. I got more money. Um, like all of those things have been set. All right. And then another activation though, on the top end was Travis Scott, right? Oh yeah, the uh, the, the Fortnite thing. The Fortnite thing. Mm. So that's the digital. Less about the conversation of those mission and brand values. J. Cole did a great job at that, but this is just for this single example of giving people a physical space to hang out and community to come together. So you have physically Dreamfest, J. Cole. On the top end, you got Travis Scott, Fortnite digitally. 
then you bring that down to an earlier level in process. Well, you got pop ups in mm-hmm. general. Yep. A lot of artists have done pop ups. Right. So it's easier to accomplish. You come in, you have this day where you can either profitably or at least break even. You know what I mean? Getting only 100 people to show up. Yeah. Right. Whatever that number looks like. All right. Um, we got an artist that we're working with right now. She just hit me up saying I think she sold 75 tickets for $100 mm-hmm. or whatever sold out in a small space. Right. There's these things that you can do, these small community driven events that you can do that will allow you to build. And we'll get deeper into that and cover more of that stuff later. But you can sell and do numbers like that. Mm-hmm. Seven five people, $100 each, small curated event, and they're happy. While there's still new people who want to come, but they couldn't make it because it was uh, sold out. Yep. Right. So now you got other people who know that, yo, when I do this, I sell out. So next time I got to like make sure I come because I might miss. Yeah. All right. So you got that. And then we talked about people like um, Tom. Uh, who else did you say? Uh, Kari. Kari. Um, like their discords, yeah, like small digital community spaces to meet up, right? Those things are great places because when your community doesn't have a way to hang out, then it's hard to truly build community around you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And community is important too because I think there needs to be space for the fans to make memories and build positive feelings towards you without you having to do any of the work. Yep. Right. So um, like I had an artist tell me a story two weeks ago about how he had this fan that met his wife in like a, the comments of like one of his videos. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Which I thought was pretty cool. He's like, they just he made a comment. She made a comment back. It kind of went back and forth. He told me it was a point where they were breaking up and they had him in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? They was DMing him. It was crazy, but it was a cool story. Right. It's like, damn. That, so if that artist. I'm assuming, you know, goes on to marry this woman and, and you know, they, they make it work. They're always going to have these positive feelings associated with him. And he didn't even do nothing. He just made the post. They, they made that happen in the comments, right? And I, I see that all the time with Discord groups, right? One of the best things about going to artist-specific shows and festivals, festivals is that you meet people there that, you know, y'all have something in common. And you might make some friends, right? And so it's like all these different experiences that will benefit you as an artist that don't necessarily have anything to do with you. Like, you didn't put them together, right? You didn't make them meet. You didn't make these connections happen. Now you talk about as your audience grows, then that shit starts happening tenfold, a hundredfold, right? Sometimes a thousandfold. And you're getting all the goodwill back. Right. Because you're curating. Yeah. So right. There's people are gonna say like, man, I met my wife at a at a at a at a Corey show. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, I, I man, I, I bro, whatever you got to sell, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I have yeah. this this feeling, this feeling associated with you. So that to me is the the most important part. Discord is cool because that can happen whether or not you're awake, right? And it's a, it's a easier setup for most artists, um, a easier to learn for most people. But like, that's the big idea behind it. Is like, you want the people congregating in these spaces so that they can build, they can they can make memories around you that don't necessarily have to do it exactly with you. Exactly. And this is the difference between fans and community. Yeah. If they, if you have a bunch of fans that never meet, then they're fans. If those fans can then meet and share experiences with each other. Now you have a community. Yep. Right. And the whole goal is to build. I call this passive fan base generation. Right. Because you get the fans to start creating new fans for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they have this environment that you curated. You t- were the tastemaker for it. But once it's there, it starts to live and breathe beyond your own ideas. They yeah. start having ideas. They say, hey, I want to do this again. Can you bring it back? Yeah. And then they're going to bring some of their other friends because they thought it was so dope, right? Yeah. Like, that's what you want. And it's easier to do that in non-music experiences than it is in music experience, right? Yeah. Like, okay, if I like this song, then I can share this song, true, right? But there's a limitation to how much you're going to get that happening, right? And if I want to go to your concert, yeah, that can happen too, but the concert experience isn't usually a shared experience to the same extent, especially when it t- um, comes to meeting new people. Mm-hmm. The way most people throw them, festivals are closer yeah. to that. But then yeah. that's not your show. That's your, you know, what I mean, that's a whole thing. Unless you're the one curating it. But if you create a type of show, 
that have in, has an energy beyond the music, right? Where it is a little bit more relaxed and people are there and sitting around, not just like standing, looking at you in a dark room, then you can curate more. If you do experiences far beyond music itself, but still curated book clubs, uh, I don't know, right? You can insert a lot of different things because I don't want to talk on some of the stuff that um, some clients and people I know are doing right now. Mm. But if you do stuff that's beyond the music, it's easy to market because people still want to have experiences, mm. period, right? And there's a specific experience that they think about when they do a concert, but I still want to go out on dates. So if you're an R&B artist, right, and you can have a good vibe for me to take my girl out or something like that, then dope. Like remember, that was one of the things I noted about that Jeezy concert. I was yeah. like, oh man, I could get this is like it's not on Valentine's Day, but I could get like Valentine's Day uh points on it. That's on a Friday. Uh she gonna get to dress up, you know what I'm saying? That's points for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like all these different things I noted. I had a whole list, right? Networking, there's a lot of things, but that's what I'm doing, right? I'm not just yeah. like, oh, this is going to see young Jeezy. Literally, I saw Jeezy. The month before those, no, two months before those tickets were out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I thought about how he positioned that specific experience. It was a higher end black tie, you know, a, attract a certain mold of people. Mm-hmm. It was a whole different thing, right? Mm-hmm. So that allows you also to hit your fans in more ways than one. Yeah. Right. So I could come here and be an opener for Corey's show and I could come back the next month and have no more new music released but have a different experience that I'm bringing you around and you will still come to my shit. Yeah, and you're right? going gonna to appeal to different types of your fans, right? Because that, yes. that setup is going to appeal to a probably older, more paid section of his fan yep. base. And then as an artist, if you're aware of these different communities and people that are paying attention to you, you can create experiences for those different pockets, right? Right. You know? so. Yeah, so some people like, I right, yeah, bro, I fuck with your music hard, but I can't be out that late. Cause I got a family. It's gonna be harder for me to get in that vibe. Mm-hmm. And, but so if you create this other version that still makes sense, it depends on your brand, right? For your brand, but mm-hmm. it might go along with your brand and then speak to a different um, part of your your fan base who their parents or they got a different lifestyle. Cause different parts of your fan base live a certain lifestyle. You want to be able to keep your your vibe consistent, right? Don't cater or pander too heavily because they still already rock with you, right? You don't yeah. gotta change who you are. Yeah. But it's just creating a new space that they can exist in, afford, right? Make it to in general, right? On the other side, another idea we've been talking about for a long time and we've participated or helping people in was just doing like video game tournaments and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Same idea, right? You got fans who are now playing each other. They're engaged around something watching. It's your tournament, but they're watching it because uh, watching other people because of you. So now you're not even doing work and you're building fans. That's the passive fan base generation mm-hmm. that I yeah. talk about, right? Yeah. Like people do celebrity basketball games. All of those things are by achieving that goal of community by bringing people around. And you don't get community without bringing people together. Yeah. You just can't. Otherwise you have fans and the fans are great, but community is better. Even better. And that's how we begin to monetize. So you demonetize, right? In today's era, when we talk about standing out, there's an artist that will have more views, but not hit as hard as people who have stronger brands. There will be people who have stronger brands and more people that legitimately love them that aren't making as much Mm -hmm. as people who have stronger communities. Mm -hmm. I got a stronger community with less people. And you got fans that would be a bigger community, but you just aren't doing the work bringing them together yep. because community creates more monetization opportunities. We just touched on that, right? There's more purchasing um, put into it because I'm just showing in different ways and I'm a part of this. I get a sticker to say no labels necessary. I get a yeah. shirt to say no labels necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like I, this, All these things just to show us a part of my lifestyle, right? Beyond my primary consumption route so there's like community is the way and one thing you got to do with those folks is communicate to them frequently quick second have you ever seen an artist catch some traction and then they start to move the numbers start to grow they might even go viral but then fast forward a year from now 
Somehow their numbers haven't really grown that much. They dropped back close to the same monthly listeners they had before the traction and viral moment. Well, that's because you have to know how to convert those moments into careers. And we've done this again and again with not only songs, but artists. And so has J.R. McKee, who's been a part of helping artists like Lil Durk, Rod Wave, Justine Sky and Money Long. And we just did a collab where J.R. McKee does a step-by-step -step breakdown of how he took Money Long from zero to millions of monthly listeners and winning a Grammy over Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, and Jasmine Sullivan. Check out this breakdown while we still have it up. You can check it out at www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work. Again, that's www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Grammy back to the video. So let's review. So far, we got collect the data on yep. these people. All right. Cause you got to know how to get out to them. You got to know who they, they are. Secondly, you got to have a mission, which is the more important one. But I say collect data just because people need their reminder. Mission, brand values. You got to have something that you're standing for. What are we? Who are we? What are the rules of this place? And let me opt in or opt out. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to allow people to opt out. Number three. Give us a space to congregate at. You have to give fans a way to meet each other, right? And you'll have people who aren't even fan fans begin to become deeper fans just because you create this other experience, right? Number four is communicate frequently. You have to have a way where they are still seeing you. And, and also when ways that you speak to them directly, mm -hmm. all right? So I still need to see you, remember that you exist, and I still need some way that not only you can, um, I can communicate to them, but fans are able mm -hmm. to communicate with each other. Now, it doesn't have to be a daily basis, something like a Discord, all right? It could be, I got a monthly show or I got a, a yearly event, but then you have ways that you build up to it and remind people of it, the before, the, before, the after. There's ways to do it where it doesn't mean this is like a daily task, but you have to have some level of ongoing communication and building. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the biggest fuck ups most artists make. They don't talk to the community, man. Don't talk to They're them. Just, just there, radio silent. Yeah. Now, some of y'all don't want them to talk back. <laughs> and I get it. I really do get it. And you can do it without talking back to people. Yeah. But you still do, if possible, I don't say you still need to do, but if you can, and if it's possible, you will find benefit for having deeper experiences with some of those people, mm -hmm. right? Um, back and forth communication, but maybe you reserve that for the physical event, certain times, hopping on a live Q and A or like open period, so you're not allowing people to text you back and forth. Hey, I just want, in terms of this text fans, this is just for me to let y'all know of some important things. I'm not gonna blast y'all every single track to come out if I'm dropping weekly, but when I'm having a big show, there's a big moment or maybe monthly, I might text you something, let you know where I'm coming from. But hey, same for y'all to text me back. When y'all wanna talk to me, all right, then we'll do this Q and A or yeah. I will do you meet up, some things like that. That's fine, you just need to establish the rules. And that's where we go back. Two, number two, all right? What are those, that mission? What are those brand values? And rules really could be its own thing when we really get down to it now that I think about it. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. rules can go deep. You know what I mean? It would be a little, even beyond just regular brand values. It's just <laughs> me be like, hey, bro, don't leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is how we at. But you get the rest of the community to understand, and then they'll support it. So one yeah, fan of the like, it. He, man, he didn't respond to me and you trying to blast me on social media. But then I already set the tone with my fans and they were like, yeah, bro, he's a regular person. He got life. He got this. He got that. Or, you know what I mean? He got a family or something. Then what do you expect? So the fans like just lean into me and, they, and, and they'll defend for me, right? Mm -hmm. If I establish those type of rules, right? But last but not least, number five, reward your community. Show love to your community in public. Right. Not that person that you just take out at nighttime and friends don't know about them. We talking about out there in public, whether it's, yo, this happened with my community. I, I had the pop up. Right. Y'all came out. Show that on social media. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then you have some fans that get jealous. Yep. Like, whoa, 
Whoa. He hugged you? That's crazy. Yeah, hey, for real. <laughs> hey, I got to pull up to the next one. Yeah. I didn't even know you were giving out hugs at these events. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? I didn't know that was possible. Like Chris Brown with the- uh, Oh, the pictures? Oh, uh, yeah, them pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, I didn't know I could get that close. I've heard about the idea of doing meetups, but whoa, I, I get to like, it's going to be like that, right? That's a different type of experience. And yeah. I can see myself in that position, All right, So like you advertise it, because also then you show that you give love. Fans will appreciate giving lo- you giving love to other fans vicariously. Some of them will say, oh, man, I just really appreciate that you're so appreciative of us, even though the interaction didn't have anything to do with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so you show that love to your community publicly. It'll be a signal of how important you are. Or and how important the community is to other community members. Yeah, and that's big because you know I've, we talked about it before in the podcast. But you know, fans like to feel like if it wasn't for them individually, yes, then you would not be where you are. You know, so they like to feel like if I stop listening to you today, you falling off, right? So when you're rewarding them and you're you're doing these things, you're you're openly like feeding that feeding that that side of them. You know what I'm saying? Whether you you agree or not, you know, it's a whole different thing. But you want fans to continue feeling appreciated and feeling like they are an important part of your success because that makes them want to go harder for your success, right? And then when they start to see, hey, when this artist has success, I benefit in this way, then they naturally want you to succeed more because they think about all the things they will get as a community because of you succeeding. You exactly. Know? So it, and I think it's it's very important to just continue like driving that point home with fans and making them feel like, hey, this is this is our thing. It's like giving um. I don't know. I look at it, it's like giving bonuses at the end of the year to employees. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, here's the base love you get for, you know, doing your job, which is in their cases, just supporting me. You know what I'm saying? Then here's some extra things I want to give you to show you, like, hey man, I, I fuck with the moments you went above and beyond, and, and, and some of the other things that you did that you didn't you didn't have to do, but it really helped. You know, helped yeah. overall. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's just that simple, right? Yeah. It's just that simple. Now, there's deeper tactics of how we can do each of these execute each of these and maybe we'll get into that in a different episode but we just wanted to make sure we laid this out for you guys because again in this competitive saturated space of not just music but content as a whole life as a whole today the way the world is set up facts right if you want to keep giving people reasons to go back you have to give them something to be included into Mm -hmm. right a reason beyond just hey you're another artist with good music good music is not enough when we talk about monetizing all right so you have all the opportunities in the world that's the good news right because people are open to that these days they're actually looking how to give you money beyond the music in itself and how to get deeper into the rabbit hole but with that being said there's a feeling of yeah you don't value the music enough or that's just not enough no it's not enough to get to where you probably want to. Because that's the only thing that's to judge. It's like, well, I'm streaming. I mean, right? So I did it. But you decide that's not enough. I could say me getting some streams and 50,000 streams a month or 100,000 streams a month, that's enough for me. The problem is not that gap. The gap is you want more, right? Maybe money, notoriety, or a deeper relationship with your fans. So for that, no, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity does exist. With that being said, we're going to get out here for today. Uh, If you guys want to see us get deeper into community building specifically and how you stand out today and what you're going to have to do in the future, let us know. Drop that in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe if you somehow made it this far and you never subscribed to the channel before. Crazy. Definitely crazy. (laughs) And yet again, this is another episode of No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Peace.